Hey guys, um, I'm Jose and welcome to this new tutorial in Unity. Um, so in this tutorial I'm going to continue with what we just left off in tutorial 5, um, which was, uh, if you remember, uh, we were doing this kind of custom user interface. Um, a button, a slider, a toggle, and yeah, a little label there. Um, and I'm going to create a new game object. And in a way, what we're going to see in this uh, tutorial is just how to make that object kind of talk to another object, in this case the user interface, GUI, and get some information from here, right? So, in a way this is kind of an interesting exercise because um, it really starts touching on the idea of, of object and object interaction, right? And how in, in Unity everything uh, lives in a game object, right? So there's nothing else but game objects and in a way, we need to start constantly making them talk. Um, so, there we have, we have a box, and we're gonna create a new script, JavaScript tutorial 06. And I've been naming this uh, tutorial um, with uh, a space in between, and that's not really a good practice. Um, so we're gonna see why, uh, uh, specifically in this, uh, in this uh, tutorial, right? So let's. Um, do, I, I left it with a space, and we will change it later. But as long as we change it here, we should be fine. So our tutorial six, we're gonna drag it into our cube. So now our cube has tutorial six, and then we can just go and edit the script. And let's see. And I have tutorial five here and tutorial six, right? Um, so let's start this script by saying variable GUI. Uh, we could call it GUI object or GUI it's enough and it's going to be from the type game object right um, so we need to and we can actually make this a private because we don't want I mean we could we can make it public and in a way just wire them right uh, if I'm saving this you see that um, tutorial 6 shows up here GUI object so you can basically drag and drop the GUI here and you have the connection. So that means that in a way we are this script lives inside the cube now, right? Um, we could actually script uh, the cube and we would have an instance of another object. But that process is a, a bit too manual, right? Like, I mean, it, it's interesting from the point of view that it's flexible, you could allow um, for some other developer to just like drag and drop whatever object they want here. Um, but in our case, um, I don't think that that's what we want to do. I just, I'm going to just remove that object and I'm going to make this a private variable. A private variable, as we've seen, uh, if I save this, you'll see that it doesn't show up here, right? So the difference between a private variable and a normal variable is that. Um, just it's for internal use, right? It's global still here, so it, 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 you can access it from any point in the script, but it's not uh, exposed for the user to be determining that, right? Um, and what we want to do here is just um, find that um, uh, that script right away. Um, sorry, the um, the GUI object, and we're gonna do a line of code that goes like, like this. So GUI, I mean GUI. Um, equals game object uh, dot find right and find find is going to be a function that allows us to search unity for an object called GUI like that right and if you see here that's the name of the object right so we're looking for an object that has that name and that's what we're kind of returning here. So um, this would be wired explicitly with in our scene, right? I'm gonna save that. Um, and what do I want to do now? Basically, if I run this, I, I, it works, uh, or it should work at least. Um, but uh, we're not doing anything with it. We actually need to access the GUI object, the game object. And here we have several things. We have the transform node and we have tutorial 5 and this is a component right everything that lives here in this stack um, is our components and you could 
add lots of components to your objects. In a way, if we want to access the information inside tutorial 5, uh, we should access the component tutorial 5, right? So we have access to the object itself. Now we should open the box of the object um, and uh, find some information in there, right? So uh, I'm going to do this part in the update just because I want to be able to kind of get, let's say, the slider is something kind of interactive, right? So let's get the information from the slider. So I'm going to say variable uh, GUI slider 1 uh, equals GUI dot get component and this is the line of code that it allows us to kind of access the component right and here in the parentheses um, the arguments that go inside this function is the name of that component right and this doesn't really go in um, like in fine, uh, it's not looking for a string that's the name of the object, it's looking for the identifier of the the name of the component. So here we should put something like tutorial uh, 05, right? But here we have a problem. Here, uh, the space here will make this not work, right? Um, so basically I, I need to just temporarily just comment that out and do some changes here, right? So the, f the change I need to do is that tutorial 5 needs to have no space in between, right? Um, so if we go and check our GUI uh, uh, and in a way um, the mono development um, should kind of re uh, remove that because it doesn't exist anymore and we could double click and open it and you see that now in tutorial 5 that's the object that's the that's the new name of the script and has been kind of uh, adapted right so that's fine um, so now we should be able to kind of access tutorial 5 like that right and that should work um, without any spaces and then we should assume that here this is kind of the component right the component that of GUI uh, inside the component we have variables right like um, if we look at tutorial 5 you see that you have a, a variable called slider 1 we could just open it to check right the variable slider 1 is a global variable uh, toggle bool is also a variable that we can access right so I'm going to type another dot that is allowing us to open that component and uh, access slider 1 so slider 1 uh, semicolon. Right, so now let's check. There's no error. Um, so that's good. Um, so, so maybe uh, what I'm going to do now is just uh, basically create another camera because uh, I would like to see this from not from a first person um, controller point of view, but like um, so create other camera and let's just place this one here somewhere here like that and I'm gonna put the depth of this camera something like uh, 5 just for it to be the camera we're working on right um, remember that the camera with the higher depth is the one that we're gonna be looking at so you see that now we're looking at the scene from a static point of view. I can still move the first person controller. We, we're just not um, moving the camera, right? And what I want to do now is um, use this slider information that we're collecting from the Q, uh, from the GUI element to determine something like the transform of my queue, right? So what if I do um, transform dot um, position dot x right so that's the x axis of the position or the x component of the position uh, we're gonna say it's equals uh, GUI slider right so that's a but if you remember the GUI slider was between 0 and 1 right so you could say well times Right. So whatever the value of the slider is, times ten. That's what I'm gonna. That's gonna be my position. And we're using here kind of equals, 
saying that we will determine explicitly the position on in x of our cube through the slider right so let's check if that works and, and let's take it from there so maybe now you see that my slider is kind of controlling exactly the position of the cube from left to right right and we are accessing all the information from the cube itself right um, so the, in a way what's happening is that the cube is reaching out to this kind of GUI element that it's kind of it, has, it doesn't have any geometry or anything it's finding that it's finding inside of it a component called tutorial of five inside that there's a slider variable controlled by a, a graphical element uh, and then using that information to um, to determine its position what if we instead of maybe that 10 it's fine but let's say instead of equal let's say plus equal right this plus equals means whatever the value of the position is just add to that this value right it's the same to say equals transform dot x plus geo slider right this this expression um, it's a bit longer to write but it's exactly the same than this Right, so that's the shorter version. And if we try now, um, if we just add a little bit of, this is going to become kind of a moving slider. And I can make it stop, but the problem is that the slider cannot go in negative here. So I kind of bring it back, right? So let's see how can we alter the tutorial 5. Now, from the slider itself, we could say it will go from minus 1 to 1, right? So that's the range of the slider. It's not going to go from 0 to 1, but from minus 1 to 1. And now my slider uh, would allow me to control some sort of movement of the cube. And it's going to be almost like the speed, right? So if I put it really fast, it's going to start going that way. And then I could just bring it back and then put it in this direction or make it move really fast. And I'm controlling the from like the position with the slider, right? So it's altering constantly the position of the cube. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the very first way of uh, starting to make two objects interact with each other. Um, we are making the GUI object um, and uh, and the cube uh, start kind of getting information from each other and and basically creating some transform uh, or some movement uh, script here. Um, so yeah, um, this is it for this one and I'll see you guys soon.